Uh, good evening, everyone, and it's a thrill to be here to introduce this particular film. Um, I am an Arctic explorer, at least that's what I like to think about. I've been studying the uh, climate history of the Arctic for over 35 years, trying to understand how the Arctic went from, at one time, actually a forested landscape with no ice sheets to what we have today. And this has led me to do a lot of research in many remote parts of the Arctic, Alaska, particularly in Northeast Russia. And I was able to lead an expedition with German and Russian scientists to drill a very large crater lake in 2009. It took me over a decade to organize that expedition and to get the money and pull all the excitement together to pull it off. And in the process of preparing for that expedition, I discovered this book about Shackleton, Shackleton's Way. And it's really a book about taking what Shackleton did as a leader and innovator and someone for people to admire, trying to learn about what he did to pull off this amazing expedition. So the film you're going to see tonight is really the original footage of what they went through to pull off this expedition. And I just have a little start with a quote here. He, he led, he did not drive. And this is taken from someone who was on an expedition directly after the endurance in which um, Shackleton lost his life to a heart attack. He drove himself really hard. Um, and uh, Wilbert D Douglas was in fact the grandfather of a, of a woman who did a postdoc in our department at UMass. It was really great to get that connection. So just to give you some context for the film that you're going to see tonight, uh, just a little bit of a chronology of events, and I hope you can see the wanted ad up here in the corner for hazardous journeys, small wages, darkness, constant danger. Um, you know, this was not an ad that would go out to everyone, and yet Shackleton had over 5,000 applications for this expedition. And what was amazing is that he was very careful about his selection process. But think about the context in which he did this. The race to the pole, which had, was completed in December of 1911, when Amundsen beat Scott to the pole by just a matter of weeks. And we all know the history that Scott lost his life, and Amundsen left the flag at the pole. So having, having this been accomplished, the next major expedition, major next thing to happen, was to traverse the entire continent to go from sea to sea, from the Weddell Sea to the Ross Sea. And it turned out that a German group had tried to do this. Uh, Filchner had tried to do this, but he admitted failure of trying to do this in December of 1912. So it was then that Shackleton, having had been to the Antarctic several times, launched this Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition to do just that, traverse the pole, in the ship called the Endurance. Now here on the right, I have a, um, a, a chronology of what happened to the ship, because the film doesn't exactly give you all of that information. It doesn't tidbit. So I'm going to fill in some of the geography. And so as you watch the film, you have a better idea. So just imagine he left five days after the start of World War I. This was a horrendous time. Many people questioned, why are you leaving now? We need every man. So there was a lot of, of, of uh, discussion about that. But he set on and arrived at South Georgia in December. Now just for those of you, we all have a northern hemisphere bias. December is like July in the southern hemisphere. Okay, it's the opposite season. And he, was a, and he left South Georgia against a lot of good um, advice he got from local ship captains. They said, the ice is heavy this year. You better be careful. Uh, might that be good? You may get frozen in. And certainly, he entered the pack ice and became in, encased in the ice by February. He then was heading into the southern hemisphere winter, and the ship started to, to uh, break apart. He then had to abandon ship, move all of his crew onto the ice, where they drifted for a while. They watched the ship sink eventually. You'll see that in the film. And you can imagine, here you are um, with a crew, 
and you've promised that we're going to cross Antarctica, and now all of that, there's a new mission involved. Now we're going to, the mission is we're going to get everybody home. And so um, they went on to do that. The ship sank. They moved off the, ca the camp onto ice. They eventually set foot and landed on Elephant Island. It's very interesting and, uh, in terms of organizing that within six days of landing on Elephant Island, he launched a boat with five others, and they head off for St. George Island to, rescue, to get the rescue. Four months later, all of these men made it home uh, from this expedition, and this is the remarkable part of it. Here is a map just showing you the, the original idea, the original plan was to come into St. George Island, come on to, uh, into the Wild LC, cross all of Antarctica, and then go out to, through New Zealand. That was the original plan. Now here's what really happened. Um, they got to St. George Island. They became in, encased in the ice out here, um, traveled with the heavy pack ice, and eventually they were trapped in here, not ever reaching the continent, and then drifted back in this direction. The ship was crushed and sank here. They abandoned their camp onto the ice. Eventually the ice started to break up, and they abandoned into three boats, and eventually made it to Elephant Island, which is like the last spot you could hope. You, you, if they'd missed that, there's not much left. So after arriving there, Shackleton and his crew take a small one boat, the biggest one, the, the best condition, and they miraculously make it across this open area here to St. George Island. And then just getting across that island is, an, is was a feat in itself. And um, it's interesting, as you get into this part of the story in the film, there's a lot of of nature, the nature film part of that, because you can imagine their priorities were not in making a film, and Hurley, who was doing a lot of filming, was actually left back. He was on Elephant Island. So it's interesting. I think what you don't realize in this film is the absolute um, desperate and difficult con conditions that these men faced. And this is from Edmund Hillary many years later in the 1970s, he said, danger is one thing, but danger plus extreme discomfort for long periods is quite another. Most people can put up with danger. It adds a little challenge, but nobody likes discomfort. And there isn't a picture in the film that shows how they live, but while Shackleton and these others travel this 800 miles to South Georgia, the remaining 22 men huddled in two overturned lifeboats, like this. This is the best picture I could come up with what it looked like. And they huddled in there and survived and kept their good spirits up as much as possible. And I think you have to remember, this is before Patagonia and, you know, Eastern Mountain Sports and all of those places you probably buy your own clothing to keep warm. So what I took away from this book, uh, particularly Shackleton, but Shackleton's Way, and I'm going to just share some of that with you and then we'll get on with the film, with some of the um, ways in which the business community and even our political community is actually trying to learn from the, the ways that Shackleton led. How did he pick his team? How did he get money from the National Science Foundation? I took that to heart. Um, learn from past mistakes yours and others, and I did that. I interviewed a lot of people who run large expeditions. I said, where did you screw up? Tell me about it. Do your part to create an upbeat environment, a positive and cheerful workplace. That's what's gonna pe keep people excited. Organizing your team, hire those that share your vision. If somebody has a different vision, they're not gonna cooperate well, particularly in difficult conditions. Surround yourself with cheerful, often optimistic people, and that's really important. You know, if you're a glass half empty person, you're not gonna survive well on an expedition with these kinds of challenges. And particularly hire those that have talents that you don't have, and I actually do that all the time. I <laughs> gather people around me that know a lot more than I do about particular things, and, that, and then you can together make a, a, a much better uh, product in the end. Keep the door open to your staff and be generous with information. And Shackleton did this. He took, in fact, some of the people he had the hardest time with, he put them in his tent to keep track of them. He wanted to keep, uh, make sure they were close to him. 
break down those barriers, be fair and impartial with conversations, have regular gatherings that, that build camaraderie, that make people feel good, match a people with positions. In fact, at one point when they get iced in to the ice, what are the people in charge of, of the actual navigation to do if now the ship is stuck? So he had to give them new jobs, train them, get them thinking about new ways to keep themselves in, uh, uh, in business and, and, and engaged and be tolerant of everyone's strengths. So with that, I'd like to, um, we'll go on with the movie. And here's a quote here. After Shackleton recovers the other 22 men who were left on Elephant Island, he wrote to his wife, Emily. He wrote, not a life was lost, and we've been through hell. And just a pic, this is a picture of Frank Hurley, who did uh, all the photography that you'll see tonight. So enjoy the film, and we'll talk about it afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.